I, like I said, I got to go dark with this show, but ultimately I want to play a villain. I want to get, I want to go real, real dark. DJ Zorich with agentsoffandom.com, joined by Broadway star, movie star, soon to be TV star, <laughs> Robin De Jesus from uh, upcoming series, Welcome to Chippendales. Streaming on Hulu and Disney Plus internationally, November 22nd. How are you doing today? Hey, TJ, thank you for that intro. Um, I'm well, I'm well. Happy to be here. Yourself? Doing very well. Also, we kind of got some similar styles today a little <laughs> bit with our, we're going for uh, that, our like, sweaters. We're, got, we're giving like, you know, late 90s, early aughts, you know? Exactly, exactly, 100%. Um, well, I'm going to be honest, if I accidentally call you Michael throughout the interview, I'm so sorry, but I am just such a big fan of you and Tick Tick Boom. So, sure. you know, if ever after the interview, uh, Andrew Garfield's not available and you just need somebody to duet with, sing some songs with, uh, I'm your guy. <laughs> but, uh, Word. Word. We'll get into, uh, we'll get into, uh, welcome to Chippendales a little bit. <laughs> Thanks. What uh, what drew you uh, to this role? And on top of that, what's it been like working so closely with uh, Kumail Nanjani? Yeah. What drew me to the role initially was the character itself. I had had a moment, I think the June before we shot it, where I was auditioning for something. And I went to go lift my pants. And when I, like, my posture changed. And when I went to grab my pants, I thought, huh, who's that? Like, there's someone there. And then that just sort of evolved for months. And what I realized was um, I love Joe Pesci and I love gangsters. And I figured out like Joe Pesci's the key for me to play a gangster in something, you know? So I was marinating on that and started growing my hair out for it. And all of a sudden one day I got an audition for Ray and everything just like lined up. Like I didn't even realize I was downloading something and it was Ray. And, and I had been specifically looking for a, a dark character, something a little more sinister and just, you know, I want to stretch myself, I want to grow. And, um, and I knew that this was a great tool for that, but I did not know the Chippendale story. So once I found out all the crazy bizarreness, it was like, this is bonkers. This is like, this is actually really funny and crazy and like low key kind of farcical, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And as for Kumail, I mean, I've loved watching him. I love watching his interviews, believe it or not. I love his movies. He, he seemed like someone that I would enjoy working with. And obviously you never know that, you know, as actors, the relationships off stage are different than on camera, right? But with, with Kumail, it was everything you wanted. He's so sweet, he's so nurturing. My first day on set, I had to improv with him. And that was so incredibly intimidating. But he just had my back. He made sure I felt safe. Um, and he, and ultimately, he made sure we just did great work because that's that's the real goal. Exactly. That's so incredible. And you do such an incredible job of portraying a bit of a darker character in uh, in this series. You know, working with. Kumail, and you've worked with Andrew Garfield in the past, and of course Matt Shackman, the director, directed Marvel's WandaVision and is going to be doing uh, Fantastic Four. Have you ever uh, watched in advance any of Matt's projects, and have you talked to any of these guys and been like, hey, you guys are... You guys are connected in this. I have to ask this. Look behind me. No, you guys I, are connected in this Marvel world, man. When am I getting uh, my spot? In yo, there? that's so funny you say that. I, 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 I have actually not met Matt yet. I, um, because I wasn't in the first two episodes. But we've had conversations through other channels, you know. And that's absolutely a world I want to get into. I, like I said, I got to go dark with this show, but ultimately I want to play a villain. I want to get. I want to go real, real dark. I want to do something that's. That's different. I think when you're built like me, when you present like me, where my natural disposition is one of joy, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty smiley all the time. Uh, I think people don't expect that, but I think there's a world where maybe I'm the villain who does what he does with a smile on his face. You know, he's not the kind of guy that's gonna give you an immediate death, but a slow, torturous one, and he's gonna enjoy doing it. <laughs> And that's kind of the world that I'm going for. <laughs> when we talk in uh, the future, which I hope happens, I'm gonna, I, I won't put you on the spot now, but next time I want an evil laugh prepared. Like I want that villainous, I just uh, succeeded in my plan, evil laugh. 
I mentioned earlier how uh, you started you started off as a Broadway star as well. Yeah. Um, what was it like originating a character in In the Heights? Uh, I have to admit, my sister-in-law's partner and my sister-in-law are both huge Broadway fans, mm. uh, and so they uh, they made me uh, weasel in a few of these questions. As well. <laughs> it's the best. It is the absolute best. There is nothing like theater. I love, I love filmmaking. I love TV shows. I love working in in all the mediums, uh, but there is something about theater that is immediate. It's an immediate engagement with the audience. It's humbling. It's humbling because you have bad days one day, you have good days other days, and all in all in between. Um, it's also what I knew first, you know, and and with within the Heights specifically, culturally was so relevant to me as a, as a Puerto Rican man from a working class background specifically. That show was about working class families, and and none of us were vilified. If anything, we were just figuring out how to survive, and the systems were what was against us, right? Um, and and meeting Lin before anyone knew who Lin-Manuel Miranda was, and sort of just watching him become this, this like, cultural icon, really. I, I forget he's famous sometimes, because I, I just remember him when we were, when we were like, kids. Uh, the thing about that show was that it was personal, it was culture, it was home, it was safety, it was legacy. It was so many things happening at once, but the most bizarre thing about it was that for all of us in the cast and crew, we were very aware in the present moment as it was happening that that's what it was. So often it's like, with it's looking back that you recognize that. For us, we wanted to respect it and love it as much as we possibly could because we knew we deserved that. And, and whenever I go to a job, and whenever I originate a role, or if it's on TV or a film, I, I want to make sure that I bring that same level of love and passion that I had with Heights to, to every other thing, and if anything, hopefully make it multiply. Well, Robin, you're incredible in Welcome to Chippendales, and we're huge fans of your work on screen, on stage, and especially as how you advocate for uh, queer rights throughout society uh, at, here at the Agents of Fandom. So thank you so much for your time today and uh, hopefully talk again sometime soon. Thank you, TJ. Blessings to you. I appreciate everything.